somehow I was hacked from inside and almost all desires uh, were overshadowed by, by this desire to be really, really free and for truth. Yes. And the only thing that is burping up like intensively is this fear of death and of um, the body, the, the attachments to the body and to the body mind. And I would like to kind of like uh, ask you to look together at it so yeah. that we can yeah. see who's ah, afraid ah, of. Uh, ah, 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 I see. Mm. Everybody has something that uh, that will somehow uh, pull the attention into into this um, into this struggle. You see that. Uh, uh, like somebody who say, you know, yeah, I know something, something is missing, something is missing. I say, okay, okay, tell me what is missing. Uh, I don't know. But that's still believed. So there's nothing actually that can be looked or found, but the belief is still there, something is missing. And why is this belief coming? No reason at all. You see, it could be like, uh, okay, some sausage on the floor. <gasps> there's a sausage on the floor. And ask somebody, please take this sausage on the floor because I'm going to miss satsang because I can't stand sausages. The mind will make any nonsense. In fact, most of it is nonsense, no? It will make up anything and then somehow if you, some part of you is, as, is buying into it. And where does this come from? It comes really from, uh, <clears throat> from identity. There is uh, some uh, attachment to identity and the fear that the identity Will, will one day finish and that will be like the end of you or something like that. Yes, there is so. a kind of like an attachment to even to experiencing. Yes. Like when the body drops, there is no more experience. It's not something then is scared, like what then? Yes. But in a way, I can say also, every night you go to this place. Yes. Isn't it? Every yes. night you go to a place where there's no experiencing, nothing at all is there and uh, uh, you don't go to bed screaming, I don't think. Is it? So we quite look forward to sleep at a long day when the special and the consciousness has been so busy in the day and something now is uh, uh, it's closing down for the day, closed shop for the day. And something just falls into that space of sleep so beautifully, so yieldingly. You, you go and surrender into your sleep. And you're very happy to be without your thoughts. You'd be very happy to be without experiencing. You'd be very happy to be without identity. You're very happy to, do, happy to be without your attachments. You're very happy to be without life, actually. Isn't it? And something is there. Where do you go? Or that one which was awake and, and who talks about oh, getting caught by this. This one happened. What happens to this one? Also, it's not there. But something is there. And it's here now also. It's here. And even uh, when one day this body also will be taken, it will watch this body going also. It watches the waking state arising. It watches the activities that arises in the waking state. It watches also the fading of consciousness. It enjoys the, the rest. If you can say it, enjoy the rest, I don't know. Some enjoyment is there somehow in the rest. You are not only alive in the cognitive state, meaning that when the consciousness is functioning, in some, that's how you know you are alive. Something knows when it is functioning like that and when it is not functioning like that. It knows activity and it knows absence of activity. And both have to be there in the, in the dynamic state. Both activity and rest must be there. But there is something there that watches both activity and rest. And it is here right now. Now don't try to find that, like you try and find other things. If I'm looking for my glasses, I'm looking, trying to find ah oh, here it, it's not going to be found like that. It's not going to be found as an object. Even the very searching for it is observed in it and by it. 
You see, this is the thing that really has to be understood now. That it cannot be found, that the ultimate cannot be found as an object. It is not an object. <clears throat> the one who is seeking itself is object to it. Do you follow like that? The one who is searching for the ultimate, hmm? to then say, Aha, Eureka, I have found the ultimate. It cannot be. Because the one who is seeking itself is watched inside the ultimate. You are the ultimate. But not as we have been conditioned to see. And if we live only in the realm of our conditioned self, then you will not find it. Like that. You will only experience that which is belonging to the relative plane. The sense of evolving, the sense of evolution. Which is okay, it is also an expression of consciousness. You are searching for something. And there is awareness of your search. The awareness of your search is it searching? Is it not a stillness? Is here? You see, it no anxi no anxiety is there. Eh? No duality is there. Nothing to report. Nothing to achieve. Nothing to heal. Nothing to change. Nothing to fix. Nothing to get again, nothing lose, nothing like that is there. But the mind is very near, edging up, it's coming up, coming, mind. Yeah. What are you going to do now? <laughs> and something goes, oh, What am I going to do now? And both the sense of the mind coming in and the, oh, What am I going to do here? is still watched from this place. No, where are you? Who actually are you? Because it seems we have the capacity to shift about in different dimensions within our own being. To function from the level of being a person, and this is happening to me, and my body, I'm going to die, and, and at the same time to be observing that, and at the same time to see from the highest place in you that all of that is still the play of the waking state. But that state cannot be called just the waking state. Are you aware or, or not of this? You see? To me, it seems like there comes this fear and I cannot watch it. But then this fear has the message priority queue, number one, go, go, go. You, you have to take care of it, otherwise, you're out. Mm. So it's kind of, I get involved and I have to run or whatever, I mean, practically. Mm. Yes, because at present you still have strong, some sense, strong sense of identity. Yes, this is what I was trying to look. This yeah. is what I was trying to look at to yeah. see who is doing it actually, and who yeah. has to take care of it. The idea you have of who you are is doing it. The idea you have of your self-image, you consciousness, have a portrait, a self-portrait of yourself as a person. And a tremendous amount of energy is poured into that personal aspect. It is still consciousness, but it is consciousness that has made become very shallow by embracing the body as itself, as its as its source, as its root, and uh, conditioning as its history. And somehow that is playing out. So when I call you back into the deep of your own self, which is always there, this surface self is moving and belief in that self is there and that is what is suffering and it has to actually it has to crash it has to suffer because through suffering on that level uh, the, the the aspiration comes to go more deep because this is not your home in that way it, it is uh, it is not stable place you must find you must come and find your stability then you can enjoy the changeful without fear you'll accept it as a natural part of the expression of consciousness. But when you identify yourself uh, within the time bound, then of course you are going to be afraid, because the time bound will come to an end also. I can actually sense that this is coming right now up, because there is something that is trying to push me to, 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 to realize that and to, to get rid of it. Because yes. it, start, it started to happen just after I somehow realized there is something else. Yes. You say something very significant now, because listen to that, no? As soon as, as soon as somehow 
the chance to awaken to the deeper self emerges, then the battle begins. It's almost a battle for who is going to sit on the throne of your heart now. Either Mr. Mind or it is going to be the Supreme Being. And I also feel it very deeply in my heart that the battle is already won. So there is no doubt in my heart what is going to happen. Yeah. And the what's you, going to happen? Tell me. The mind is going to die completely. Yes. yes. And it's just a matter of time, so to speak. Yes. Uh, and uh, because the yearning is so hard that I know that every circumstance is actually pushing me there, and there is no turning back and going. So, yes. But still, I felt the urge to come here with this question and. Yes. The mind is going to die simply means that it's going to lose its influence. Yes. This is what it means. Because so there's no mind to die. It doesn't exist really. Uh, it exists only because it's believed in, in that way. We feel that there is an independent mind like this. And it's not that we are responsible in that way. It's all together a package deal created by Mr. God. Okay, that we are all going to, uh, we have we as that, because our root can only be the Supreme. And in manifestation, as individualities, in expression like this, in each body, this awakening must come. And this, this you will come to see increasingly with gratitude, how blessed your life is, you know, to even have the chance to participate in this great game of existence. It only when you believe yourself only to be the body mind, then it will feel like a cruel game. But as you discover yourself as consciousness, you will see, and you are seeing, that it's a great, it's a tremendous. Uh, how else could life be? How else could life be, if not a, a game of transcending, of awakening uh, to our innate nature? You see, some people say, but why isn't it just always nice from the beginning? You see, I said, but it has always been nice. Well, you don't see it because somehow you choose, uh, somehow we say choose, but uh, to, to hold on to the limited, to the limited. And something, the life burns, the potato, the potato gets hot in your hand, and then you have to throw it. And then you realize, oh, with my free hand, I'm so much more, I can clap, I can dance, I can do something. You see, but this is a very important stage. What you say just now, because something has chosen uh, truth, you may say like this: uh, chosen freedom. You're, you're compelled to into freedom, like that. I can't even say it how much. So I'm rather, rather quiet. And yes, yes, yes. It, I never really believed in God. I was an atheist and everything. Yeah. And when it happened, it just like, I, I love a, for God actually, and I don't even know. What to say about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like this, is your conscious uh, consciousness uh, yeah, blossoms? Um, yes, it will be. These are, you know, um, strong time for the mind. It's, it has to put everything now to try and somehow sabotage your freedom. It will play like this. Uh, it's also part of the game. It's also a servant of God on some level. And you have to transcend this thing. And you can invite it, come now, I'm ready. Even if I'm not ready, throw your best punch now, ready or unready. You see? Because if you say, look, I'm ready, he's going to say, uh -huh, I'll come when you are unready. Okay? <laughs> so say, ready or unready, throw your punch. You see? Yeah. Very happy to, be, to meet you like that. Yeah, me also. Uh, yes, yes. Very, very good. Very good.
open to whatever may come my way. Open to be open to come what may. Open to open my eyes, open to see. Open to be free, open to be. Open to the light of the love that shines. Open to accept, open to I don't mind. Open, open to change and to the changeless. Open to open to myself